Well, it's the first day of winter, so I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at what I consider the best snowboarding game of all time, Amped 2. What makes it so great? Let's take a look. Well, it's winter. And although I'm a skateboarding channel 98% of the time, I thought it'd be cool to look at some snowboarding stuff, so I'll be trying to do that throughout the winter. Growing up, I played a lot of skateboarding games, but also BMX, snowboarding, even inline, anything trick-based. And the best snowboarding game that I've found all of this time is Amped 2. It came out on the Xbox in 2003, and it's a pretty legit sim. I'm convinced that the Skate series was at least partially inspired by this game. It's all about realism and style, but there's still a lot of personality. Let me show you the style point system. So the thing about snowboarding in particular is that you can get a ton of airtime. In a video game, that means you can do completely ridiculous spins and flips. It's harder to find balance in the gameplay. But here's how Amp 2 handles it. This meter at the bottom of the screen is your style points, and they're hugely important. You can do the same trick twice and score 20 times more points if you do it with style. Basically, you just have to do the trick smooth and slow and use up all of your airtime. So if you do a really quick 720 and stop dead in the air, it won't be worth as much as a slow, controlled 540. On top of that, you can tweak out grabs for extra style, and if you land flat and straight, you'll get extra points for stomping a trick. You can also spin slowly on rails for style points there too. The system is a great way to keep the game realistic and still challenging, but it only works because of the amazing control scheme. Here's how it works. In general, the left stick controls your body, and the right stick controls your hand. So if you hold up on both sticks, you'll do a front flip and a nose grab. When you let go of the right stick, you let go of the grab. It works really well, but there's more to it. While grabbing, you can hit the triggers to tweak it out in different ways. If you hold up left in regular stance, you'll do a melon. The left trigger will tweak that into a crooked cop, and the right trigger will do a palm grab, and holding both will do a method. Counting all the different grabs and tweaks, there are 24 different tricks to do. And that's not all that the triggers do. If you're not grabbing, they twist your board left and right. You can use it to land in a specific grind if you're not at the right angle, or you can save a spin that wasn't going to land straight. Since you don't want to speed up or slow down in the air and lose style points, you can let go of your grab and twist at the last second. All of this adds up to a game engine that's really fluid and fun to play with, even without anything to do, but there are a ton of different events to try. There are only a handful of mountains in the game, but there are different runs and different event types to do at each one. The basic run gives you some stuff to do, a basic high score and a high media score, which only counts if you do them while being filmed, so you have to make an effort to hit the right ramps and rails to get points toward that. There are a few tricks you have to do too. It's either a specific trick or a score to reach doing something basic. You go, handsome pants. There are also gaps, which are marked with these sparkling lines. They're easy to find, but not so easy to do. It's tough to tell exactly where you have to land, and you only get one shot per run, so it's kind of a pain if you have to try it again. The last thing is the one you'll never forget. The thing that will haunt your dreams. The thing I still hear in my head 13 years later. These horrible, possessed snowmen that you have to hunt down and kill. There are eight of them in each level, and they're hiding everywhere. The only way to find them is to listen for their annoying voices and their insults. It's incredibly satisfying to destroy one of these pieces of crap, but more often than not, they get the last laugh. They'll be between ramps or behind fences, and you'll just barely miss them on your run. Being a snowboard game, you can't just turn around and take another shot at them, oh no. You have to remember where it was, then restart the whole run and try again. So many times I slipped or turned just a little bit at the wrong time and I missed, only to hear it cackle at me as I desperately tried to turn and hit it, but it never worked. After you're done with the generic challenges, there are also sponsor challenges. Each sponsor has a certain type of trick he wants to see. Stylish aerials, long rails, long butters, you name it. You'll get them amped by doing this kind of stuff, but you lose points for doing other kinds of tricks. Their voices get annoying when you have to redo one a few times, but it's not too bad. The stuff they give you is pretty funny. It starts off with a piece of pizza or a pair of socks, but it gets better as the game goes on. Next are the photo shoes. You are dropped at a spot with these rings, and you have to go through all of them while getting a certain score. These are probably the hardest part of the game. Sometimes your stats just aren't right for the challenge. You might not be able to make the gap all the way, or you might overshoot something, but it's always possible with enough patience. 
you can save your replays, but it was 2003, so you can't upload them and edit them like Skate. That would have been awesome though. Next up are the pro challenges. You follow a real life pro snowboarder and you have to one up all of their tricks. They're all voiced by the real people and they all have some annoying catchphrase you'll hear over and over. Ah, no shrimp on the barbie for you! It gets really annoying. Luckily, these aren't too hard. When you win, you'll usually unlock something, like a new tweak. The last major challenge type is the contests, or the events. These are pretty basic, but you've got things like high score, biggest combo, most media points, and that kind of stuff. You have to do enough challenges to rank high and get invited. These can be a little annoying because there are other people that you'll run into, but they're not too bad. When you beat these, you unlock more stuff, like pro videos. Pros will talk about getting sponsors, filming your first video part, and all kinds of topics like that. I'm not at all interested in the snowboard industry, but it's cool that they give you this stuff at least. One thing that really drew me into this game was the snow skating. I never got into snowboarding because I lived in Michigan. There's tons of snow, but not a lot of mountains. If you want to go, it's an all day trip and it gets expensive. I loved snow skating though. I made all kinds of little ramps and slider bars and stuff like that. I would do flip tricks off my little ledge that I made with my skate box. It was a good way to pass along Michigan winters. So when I saw that in a video game, I was blown away and I had to try it. As much as I loved it when it was new, the snow skating was probably the weakest part of the game. It's just an add-on and it's not really taken too seriously. The thing is, you don't really snow skate down a mountain. Sure, some people do, but at that point you might as well just snowboard. The cool thing about snow skating is being able to do skateboard tricks on rails and doing flip tricks. The game doesn't really take advantage of that. The skate, SK8 because it was 2003, the skate runs are just the same thing as the snowboard runs. You can ride through deep snow and rocks and all that kind of stuff. The only real gameplay difference is that you have to grab when you do body flips, for obvious reasons, and you can do flip tricks. Do you use the joystick in Tony Hawk games? Yeah, I don't either. It's not as precise when you want to do a specific trick. But this game is designed around using the joysticks, and the controls are the same as the snowboarding. It's all implemented kind of lazily. Here's how it works. You hit a direction, then you hit X to do a flip trick. But since the joystick also spins, you'll find yourself spinning a little bit and bailing. And it's worse when you do up or down directions because you'll start to do a backflip, and then you'll bail because you didn't grab. Why are there impossibles in this game? I know some people do them on snow skates, but it's not common at all because it's so hard to get the vertical pop. You can even do a front foot impossible, but not a 360 flip, varial heel flip, hard flip, or any more of that basic stuff. It doesn't really matter though because it controls so weird that you'll end up just riding around and doing grabs and spins like a snowboard to get enough points. I give them props for putting this in the game because it was still pretty new at the time, but I wish they took it more seriously. So that's Amp 2. It's not perfect, but it is my favorite skateboarding game so far, and it still holds up really well. The graphics are still good, the gameplay is still solid. If you still have an original Xbox, give it a try. But remove your clock capacitor first. If you don't know about that, they explode in the original systems and leak acid all over the place. There's info about that online. There was also a sequel to Amped on the 360 Amp 3, but it wasn't nearly as good. I don't remember it that much, and I don't have a 360 anymore to play it on these days, but the reviews from that time weren't great, so I think it's safe to say that 2 was the best in the series. Do you guys know about any other games with snow skating in them? I've always been curious. Let me know about that in the comments. And what other snowboarding games would you like to see me cover? A few people said that they loved 1080 on the N64, which I still haven't played, but let me know what else I'm missing out on. If you liked the video, hit the like button and tap my logo on screen to subscribe. Here are some more videos that you might like. Thanks for watching.